today is the first day that I was late with Curious Coffee. Although, in my defense, she was in half an hour early waking up. So, I guess we call it even trade. And I was going to do this before, but now I get to do it now. Bergie, like I have a knife, bud. Do you mind? But there's a lot of stuff at our front door that I didn't um, order. And I think Kyrie ordered most of it. Oh, for the love of God. Oh, that that's coming out. Okay. There's a, a broom handle coming out of this one. Back up, dogs. Go away. Hey, back up. Scram. You think this thing's making a noise? Maybe it's because it has low battery. Yeah. So, yep, this was fun. No. Um, let's see. I don't. Nope. No cool chewy box. I already opened a box. Um, this is premium fake moss, and these are uh, green things. R round floral foam. Pack of twenty. Good. Good. And whatever this is, it's a box of I don't know what. It doesn't say. Bedshire Get Cozy Fleece Blanket. Did you buy two fleece blankets? Yeah, so there's going to be the pots that are coming. The, the, the what? The, the pots? Pots for the olive trees. Oh, because olive trees, right. I have to put the blankets in it, and then i got to put this. What's that? It's a microphone. Move I don't your head. want that. Well, nobody can hear you. Nobody can hear you scream. What? Now the internet can hear you in your infinite wisdom. You don't have that. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee. That's okay. You chime in every once in a while. After all this, like, vlogging while you're asleep stuff. People you vlog drink. me while I'm asleep? Yeah, like when I talk to the camera and you're not awake. That's crazy. Or when, you, when I talk to the camera. You said and vlogging you're... while you're asleep, <laughs> like you watch me sleep vlogging. That's not what it, I meant, but okay. You're a creep. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Bergie, I, Mary, I, he's creepy. Bergie, this box, great, Russian nesting boxes. What's that? I don't know. Is this, oh, is this your olive tree? Oh, cool. Oh, I bought two. Well, there's two things in here. Oh. Here's one. Actually, it's not that heavy. Uh, artificial olive tree, there you go. It's one Kimmy bought. It's the one Kimmy got? Yeah. Kimmy is my sister, by the way. Also, you're facing that way, and Kiri, I promise, is right there. She's not a figment of your imagination. Although she might be a figment of mine. Are you no. real? I don't know. Oh, stop it. Yep, she's real. That's really going to be awkward. Okay, we have to put it together. Oh, goody. I get to put a fake tree together. Uh. I don't think so. Oh, that thing was six foot tall. Yeah, I think you do. That's not six foot tall. Doesn't look like it. It's gonna go here for now. Thank God the trash comes twice a week, and the recycling part comes on Wednesday. Once a week. What's today? Today's Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, I don't know anymore. I mean, we had this problem with our house in Nashville, too, that we would just have so many boxes all of the time, because long gone are the days where you have to, like, just go to, like, wherever, whatever, sh like, shopping you had to do, and get whatever you needed. You just pull it up on your phone and just get it now. But, I don't know. I'm gonna take a break after you use that. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I'm sure there'll be more boxes. I actually thought those were six foot tall, though. Oh, it looks like they're cut in half. 
Oh, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a, okay, there's pieces to put together. Lovely. Deal with this in a bit. go in the garage anyway, so they're going to come with me to the garage. Marsha, get out of the garage. Marsha. Marsha. Come on. Thank you. Nelly, back up. Go away. Whew. Lovely. Now my kitchen is a travesty. My favorite. Kyrie looks like bought a, looks like there's like a half foam roller in here, but there's other stuff too. I don't know. Oh, it's a bag of all sorts of stuff. All right, well, that's kind of nice. <sighs> Seriously, my largest expense is, for, or from Amazon anyway, is uh, sparkling water. And then whatever else comes in. Well, frankly, it's my Prime account, but uh, I, I, I don't like to look. What in God's name? This giant box for this thing. It's just like an industrial broom, but it's like a box that can fit 55 millis. Would you like to live in this box? It's a big house. You could live in this box. You can only live in it two-dimensionally, though, because it's not very big. Oh, God. Breaking that box down and getting it in the bin is going to be a lot of fun. A lot of people have hard times with pocket knives. I, my father has carried one since I can remember, and they always come in handy. Ah! Well, this has been put back together. Well, I got. Wait, why are there. I guess so you can switch directions, I guess. There's two holes in the top of this. One over there, one over there. I guess in case you like flatten the bristles too aggressively on one side, you can just switch it, maybe. I don't know. I'm not a broom expert. I'm not a witch. We'll have to go find a witch that understands how this works. So we got to go for a walk. I thought Curie was going to run because when she first woke up she said she was going to run but turns out she was uh confused by what i said oh this is velcro not i don't even know for that and so we went for a walk it was a nice walk bruin is next to me panting yeah camera will pin down to see him but i promise he's next to me panting you won't be able to hear him actually i'm curious out with marcia for an extended walk because she has the energy of well, she has too much energy, let's be honest. Um, so I get to try to tidy up the kitchen because it's a travesty now. Millie, none of those boxes are for you, sorry. All right. Uh, I guess you just, huh? Contains sharp objects. Oh, there's oh, there's a protection. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, um, we've got a square hole in what I thought was a round peg. Um, yeah, if I've learned anything from kindergarten, that doesn't work. But it's square and square. Hey, get in there. There you go. Tree. Apparently, this is a six foot tall tree. Um, yeah, all right, I'll buy it. I'm six, one and a half, so here we are. You're going to live over here for now. I will give you a friend, and your friend will live next to you until Kyrie tells me that I did it wrong. <laughs> and <clears throat> they will get placed someplace else. I swear I always like make her sound terrible. And it's just how my mind works. She's not actually terrible. Just want to make that very clear. Uh. I've been plagued with a handful of comments on the video I posted about my, uh, my like Thor's hammer lift that I posted on Instagram and YouTube as of posting this, which will be yesterday, but I posted it all today. And uh, there's a couple people with like varying degrees of kindness um, that are telling me that like my leg injury is fake <laughs> and that I'm also that I'm not a real person because that seems reasonable. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what did I have to do to get this kind of social media attention over the course of my last five or six years on social media? Like, if I take a step back, can you, uh, you can't even see my knees. Nah, well, maybe I'll, let's see, move more boxes. We can turn a chair. And you will live on the chair for now. Probably not upright. Hello, Millie. Hello, the top of Bruin. Or actually, Bruin's butt. Um, so I don't know how the lighting is. I can't really see in the viewfinder. But big scar, it's like a purple thing. And then big giant like knee. This is the whole knee. And if I take my fingers like this and move it over here, um, that's very different. So yeah, that's, like, that's my kneecap. And if I put it over this knee, um, yeah, that's probably my kneecap as well, but there's a lot of goo in there that, well, firm goo. We don't like firm goo in places that they're not supposed to be firm goo. I'll stop talking now. But just the insistence that I like didn't actually injure myself when there are literally hours of content that I have produced based on the injury, my, reco my recovery from the injury, like physical therapy, um, like dealing with the insurance companies, talking about learning how to walk again, like the joke about microscopic surgery, like, <laughs> like, what? I'm not sure like who hurt these people. And you know, I'm genuinely like, I, like, I feel bad for them. Um, because like how, how like awful does your life have to be to have that negative opinion of somebody that you've never met? And, and I often like lose sight of that, but I always come back to it just because it's like, it's hard to take personal attacks, like not personally, but then I have to remember that these people don't know me personally. Frankly, not many people do. I don't go outside a lot. Got about an hour and 15 minutes until Kyrie has to leave for work. I'd like to try to clean all this stuff up in a reasonable time frame. But unfortunately, my recycle box is pretty full already, so these may be going in next week's recycling. Not like super thrilled about having them take up space in my garage for a week, but. I mean, I guess it's the reasonable thing to do, I suppose.
I know, I know you're hungry, guys, but we gotta wait at least like 30 minutes before you guys can eat, and then I don't know how long we have to wait before Marsha can eat, because she doesn't have the bloat problem like you guys could potentially have. Probably sooner. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make a video about this or not, but I had the idea as I was scrolling through Instagram briefly. Um, there's this guy, he goes by the handle Tasty Shreds. I don't know what his, um, his real name is, but I, I have like seen him pop up over and over and over again. And he was like very much overweight, very much out of shape and decided that, well, because he likes food, he's gonna try to make the food that he really like wants to eat and really enjoys into, you know, uh, lower calorie versions. And it all, like it all looks so good. And I think for everything I've seen, he is very, he is very, how do I put this? He doesn't say that you have to do it that way, right? He doesn't say that, you know, uh, if you wanna eat plainly, then that's bad, right? He's just an opportunity for people to, you know, find recipes that are lower in calorie than they otherwise could be. And, and I think that's terrific, because a lot of people like to do that every once in a while. I even like to do that every once in a while. But I think what gets lost, and he doesn't say this, and I think this is just a, a, an assumption that if you say X, then you mean the opposite of, of X, which is never the case. But what gets lost in a lot of his comments is that like you, you can do a more plain style diet for the majority of your food, which I think is probably what most people who are trying to lose weight do anyway. And that's what I prefer to do. Like I make Kyrie's like breakfast and dinner and I put more effort into the pr preparation of the meals than I do for my own because I don't really care that much, right? So she likes this special sauce with her, with her dinner and I you know, make it, it's probably, gosh, I don't know seven or eight ingredients you would take. Um, it's not that hard, but it's seven or eight ingredients. And I'm, I'm just like, eh. Like it doesn't, it doesn't strike me as something that I need to do for myself. And understanding that is like, is, is part of the process, right? You don't have to do one thing or the other. You don't have to go to one extreme or the other. Like sometimes, like, oh gosh, it was probably a couple weeks ago that I made a buffalo chicken pizza when the um, the crust was just was was uh, ground chicken breast, and that was I don't think it was his it was somebody else's video that I will never find again. Um, but that being said, like sometimes I'll do that, but most of the time it's like it's very it's very plain. It's you know uh, meat, fruit, vegetables, and that's about it. And there's nothing wrong with doing that if it's something that you enjoy and can sustain for a long period of time. If it's something that you absolutely loathe and cannot sustain that for more than two meals in a row, maybe don't start there. Like when I started my journey, I convinced myself that, you know what, that's no longer the guy I am now. I am this guy who does it this way, doing these things, eating these foods, and that just, became who I was, because I told myself, you know what, I'm, I'm not that guy anymore. And every once in a while, I would still go have some, something else, right? And over the course of time, as I have been going through this, this journey, that, like in the first couple of years, that became, I think maybe after the first six months, I started to forget that it was the scheduled time to do the thing that wasn't directly in line with um, I guess the weight loss journey and that stuff faded and just became not a part of what I did, right? Because every Wednesday, I say, I say this all the time, every Wednesday I would walk a half mile down the road to get five guys and I would walk back and it was great until maybe, yeah, I think it was probably more than six months, somewhere between eight and 12 months later, I like started to forget to do that and I started to forget that, hey, it's Wednesday, it's Five Guys Day. And that just kind of faded out over the, the subsequent, frankly, couple months. Usually it was maybe we go out to dinner at a different place and 
make a better choice as far as like healthier food, but not because I felt like I had to, but because I felt like I wanted to. And I think that's a, a big distinction, right? But I think it's okay if you want to eat a plainer diet. The 30 calories a week of seasonings would probably benefit a lot of people that go too hard on the other side. But if you see these like really extravagant, delicious looking meals like the Tasty Shreds has, it's not the only way to do things 24 seven. And I, I'm pretty sure he would agree with me. Never met the guy. Um, seems like a nice guy though. I, I'm pretty sure he'd agree that if you don't want to do that all the time, you shouldn't. But these are options for people who want to make more extravagant things and I think they're fantastic. But the public and the internet being the public and the internet, um, nobody's satisfied until it's the extreme. I really need a taller tripod for the, just the counter, but it is what it is and here we are. Oh yeah, I was wondering where I was so tired around dinner time. And I also forgot that I had switched my, um, my continuous glucose monitor site and it takes two hours to warm up. I, for those of you who are diabetic that watch me, I have a Dexcom G6 because the G7 is not FDA approved to talk to my tandem T-Slim pump just yet, but hopefully someday soon it will be. And I, uh, I did it shortly after I had lunch, which was not a carb heavy meal, but <laughs> of course I get the, uh, the notification that my blood sugar is high as it came to like, I don't know, like when it like finished warmed up, warming up and it was 345. And I thought to myself, that's why. <sighs> the, it doesn't often get that high, let me tell you. Um, usually I catch myself long before that happens, but Kyria and I took the dogs for a walk and you know we that's really the one of the very few times during the day when she's working overnight that we can like properly communicate just you know as husband and wife <laughs> and mainly because during her her drive home she calls me and mostly to just stay awake i guess on the drive to work she usually calls her mom and in the morning when we chat, it's like I'm still like waking up and trying to gain my faculties because that takes kind of a while. Like I'm still a functioning person, but there's not a lot going on up here <laughs> when I work, uh, wake up first thing in the morning other than like my reflexes. Like I let the dogs out, I go to the bathroom, I weigh myself, I get the dogs back in, make sure they've got water and get annoyed by them for a little while but that's kind of it. And then when she calls, it's a good sign. Like, oh, right, I need to make her breakfast so she can eat and then we can go for a walk. And that's what, you know, every morning is for me. And then she, by the time she goes to sleep, it's time for me to start working. So just in the nick of time. And I, you know, I work when she sleeps and then after she leaves, of course. Um, and then during the time when she's at work, she's, you know, at work. So not a lot of communication goes on there. Not much other than, you know, like thinking about you, hope your night's doing okay, how are the dogs, um, and then a good night text, and then, you know, lather, rinse, repeat. It seems, it sounds kind of terrible when you talk about it like that, but like neither of us are like particular like social butterflies. Neither of us are like, I don't know, doing anything bad. I was talking to my barber about this yesterday and he was, so he's a, he's single divorced, um, mid fifties, talking about how like the women that he tries to start seeing, they're like, <laughs> they're, they're like, they'll see him, but they're also often married. And I'm thinking, that sounds weird. And, you know, I was thinking that Kira and I kind of like became adults together. Like we met when we were adults, but mentally not finished developing because I was 26, she was 24 when we met. 
and like as far as I'm concerned, like by law you're technically an adult, but I don't know. There's a big difference. And I think most people in their, uh oh, I think most people in their early to mid 30s would probably agree. Uh, and of course, there's variance for people in general, based on all sorts of stuff. But you know, we got to we got to kind of not quite grow up together, but like grow into adulthood together. Uh oh. So I got. Okay, love you, bye. Love you, bye. Like my parents see me often, and my mother calls also often. <laughs> I think they like, they know that I'm not like in the throes of working at the moment and they're worried about like Kyrie and how, like how much her workload happens to be. And given that it's, we're around the holidays and you know, people don't want to go to the hospital, it seems to have been lower, which I think will probably stop starting tomorrow night. Like not very many patients compared to like average, I guess below average. Um, still plenty of work to do. But here's what it is. Uh, let's see how this goes. Usually a coin flip hurts like hell, doesn't hurt like hell. Hmm, not bad. It's usually like that first introduction of the needle that just kind of gets me. Sometimes that feeling lingers, which is not a lot of fun. And sometimes it's just, here it is, Okay, bye. Which is, you know, if comparing one to the other, that's the preferred method. But, like, of course you'd love it if it, you know, didn't hurt at all, but. That is not a luxury I'm afforded. Uh, okay. Needs good to be saved. Oh, God. Things I'm worried about with regards to having my blood sugar drop probably as aggressively as, as it's going to, especially considering my activity level over the last three days has been significantly higher than it has been in the last, I don't know, seven, eight weeks, is not that I think I'm gonna bottom myself out, like have my blood sugar come down too far, because I, I, I dose appropriately. And I know that it's gonna come down and I know how long it takes to work. And, you know, we call it rage bolusing. <laughs> so there's a concept in diabetes, if your blood sugar doesn't come down uh, as fast as you otherwise would have liked it to, you will often like repeat doses, sometimes even like before the initial dose has had a chance to do anything. And, you know, I like pretty much every other diabetic on the planet has been guilty of rage bolusing. And I have been a lot better about it since starting on the pump mainly because you know there's the calculations are built in i you know i don't really have to take many guesses and i was just looking at my app like like my health app on the on the iphone and my steps per day over the last uh what does it say 10 days i think it was were actually approaching 8000 and for the 18 days before then were just barely over 5000 and that's the noise my phone makes when my blood sugar is dropping precipitously, um, so I know that's gonna happen. But the thing that I often worry about is cramping because when you get a bunch of insulin, it exchanges hydrogen and potassium. Hydrogen comes out of the cell, potassium goes in. And that can cause muscle cramps. For me, it often causes my hands to cramp. So I might be using my computer, doing whatever, and my hands will just kinda go like this, like, hey, what, do you guys mind? Uh, you know, and <laughs> I know it's coming, so I, I will drink as much water as humanly possible in the interim. I'm not gonna like go eat a bunch of potassium because I know that my total body potassium hasn't changed, Just it's just shifting in and out of cells and you know, <sighs> Something that a lot of the health gurus don't understand is that your body is way smarter than you are. Like, it'll do what it has to do long before you know there's a problem. So, my kidneys will figure it out. That part of it I'm not worried about. It's just the cramping that gets really annoying. 
especially if I get a leg cramp in the middle of the night with a recently repaired quadriceps tendon. I don't want to do that. But luckily, it's mostly th this kind of thing. It's mostly my hands, so I don't really have to worry about it. And it's a lot less painful than a hamstring cramp. Uh, so I'm, I guess I'm kind of grateful. So we'll see how this feels. My, uh, <laughs> my food content has not been a whole hell of a lot today. Let's, let's, let's figure it out together, shall we? Um, and I have that ability because I haven't eaten that much. The only thing I didn't include was the salad that we had with dinner, which was not a lot of salad. Um, the other reason I might be feeling like crap is because minus the vegetables in the salad, I've only had 35 grams of carbs today. <laughs> Which is not a lot. Um, so let's let's assume let's assume that Kiria's homemade dressing with everything that was in that salad was 250 calories. So I'm that theoretically including that, and the macro breakdown I, I feel is irrelevant because I've already hit my protein goal. Um, if you add 250 to that, come on, get get there. The the one in the white. Uh, over here, what I've had so far. So adding 250 to that is 2,048. Um, I'm 210 pounds. I should eat more. But I don't want to until my blood sugar comes down because then I'm just going to feel worse. So I get to wait. Oh, I think it's going to be a couch day. It's not even late and I'm very tired. Again, blood sugar. But I'm gonna I'm gonna fix my microphone first. But I'm gonna go. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go lay on the couch because I'm tired. I'm sure at 8:30 I'll be all fired up for something. But now it's 6:45.